Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Every now and then, you might need a turbo on a 1KD FTV. We're here just changing out this turbo. Uh, as I mentioned in a couple of posts, three in the last week. Now, it's pretty rare, don't get me wrong, I'll have a turbo sit on the shelf for six months and we don't need one, but there's been three in a week and that's why we keep a few. So if you need one, you can contact me at the right time with that text message. But here's some information on changing it, getting it pretty straight to the point. Short video, intercooler off, airbox out, um, you're going to undo, remove all the plugs and wiring limb from the turbo there. We're just working on that bottom plug there and a few things like that. I don't want to waste your time, so more details soon. Got to remove the uh, PCV pipe, that's it. Take it out of the way. Nice demonstration, beautiful. beautiful. Off the top of the turbo there, right? Crankcase ventilation from the valve cover there. You need a 12 mil, get that bracket out, get that out of the way. A little bit more info. So what happened with this one? When did you get the 1251 originally? Was that about a year ago or even longer, wasn't it? Yeah, P1251 he got a couple of times. Give that a spray. Yeah. Trying to get that plug off down there. Um, yeah, look, sometimes you get away with lubing that linkage for a while and that's it. But in this case, sometimes it can just give you an indication of what's to come and it could be a turbo straight away. But what happened this time? You got the 1251. Was it, didn't, was it, enough, was yeah, it straight away or a day next, or two later? Next day, turbo. Next day, right? So 1251 again reappeared, whatever it was, a year or two later. You can keep going, mate. Right? So we'll remove these couple of clamps here okay. so that it gives us a bit more space from the plugs and the wiring loom and a little bit of movement in the pipes, but be careful of those. Right, so we've got the bottom plug off now. So yeah, 1251 a while ago, then 1251 again, and then two days later... <laughs> mate, emergency vehicles on the way. No, 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 it's a turbo. Anyway, so yeah, turbo. So luckily we keep it in stock and uh, VIP emergency service, bring it in and let's get it sorted. Okay, so next thing is you've got to get the coolant hoses off for the turbo. The dipstick bolts out, but we don't want to pull the dipstick out yet because we don't want coolant going in the dipstick hole, right? So get those clamps off and gently work slowly and get those hoses off and the dipstick out. So this is the genuine gasket kit we'll be using. Uh, it's got pretty much everything you need there. And the brand new genuine turbo. Like I said we're keeping them on the shelf and if, uh, if you're gonna get one, what I do, I open it up, have a quick check and I put extra packing in. Even though these ones, these Prado ones are packed pretty well. Um, just a bit of extra packing, repacking, and I'll put the gasket kit down in the box here with the invoice. If you uh, get to about that stage, you need to raise the vehicle, get the wheel off to allow a bit more access in here. And while replacing the turbo, it's probably a good idea if you haven't recently to do an oil change. We're going to put a little bit of fresh oil in the turbo, and of course, nice fresh oil in the sump would be helpful, you know. Precautions replacing turbo, work out why it happened. Depending on what makes and models, general information, sometimes you need to clean oil systems out, flush lines, all sorts of things, because it may have been what caused the problem. Let's have a bit more of a look at the new turbo. These are the gaskets that uh, come in that kit that we showed. It's a couple of different kits. This is the kit we supply with all the turbos. So if it's not in this picture right here, then uh, you're going to need to buy any other bits and pieces you need separately. Um, have a look at the turbo. Just have a bit of a look around. Actually, I'll turn the light on. Yeah, much more fun when the light's on, isn't it? What you get to see in there. See the variable veins there, if that makes sense to you. Okay. Don't forget there's a precaution, right? So you've got a couple of different places where obviously you've got exhaust in and out, you've got, you know, clean air in and out. And so you've got two separate components. Let's do a quick explanation, right? So one side here is driven by the exhaust, right? Which connects to the other side. We'll call it just the sides to keep it simple. Too many big words. And um, all right. So the exhaust drives one side <clears throat> to put the intake air under pressure at the other side, okay, and in the middle. So there's coolant and there's oil, keeping things cool and lubricated. And I just want to point out, don't forget, just turn it upside down, don't forget to remove that piece of tape. Don't just think that's all normal and part of a gasket. You need to get that off before you install the gasket in the pipe. There's lots of companies these days that like selling uh, these. And, you know, what is it, 400 bucks or something. But everybody I've ever heard of that's replaced that, it's turned out to be a waste of time. If there's a problem with that or a code that relates to that, it's more related to the mechanical part and it not being able to work because of a problem going on inside there, which is why 
if you've got a problem with a turbo, it's most likely going to need a whole turbo. Whether you go for the new one, it's up to you. Whether you go for your cheap aftermarket stuff, poor man pays twice, do it more than once. You can do that if you like, or if you go for a rebuild. Um, Ben's pretty good at doing turbos, but, you know, I just like the new stuff. We know what we're going to get out of. It's brand new. Um, quality control. Look after it with your oil changes. Switch it off and let it idle a bit if you've come straight off the highway. Um, with less EGR, clean injectors, all that sort of thing. I don't think you have too many problems. You'd be pretty unlucky if you uh, if it happened a second time, if you got a turbo from me. That's what I believe. So if anyone's got a turbo from me and uh, it failed again without an aftermarket exhaust system, of course, big exhausts, right? This is the exhaust bolts on here, dump pipe, right? So obviously you can work out what goes in and out yourself, can't you? If that's where it comes out, obviously that's where it goes in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Obviously, that's where the air goes in again. This is where it comes out, right? So, right, so the reason for getting the car, the wheel off to make a bit more access, get the uh, covers off, so you can get access in there. Take the heat shield off the turbo. You're gonna need to access the uh, mounting bracket there at some stage as well. And you can see we've been spraying. That started um, as soon as we knew the turbo had to replace. So I said, look, start, please start spraying the bolts. Make those easier to get out. Hopefully, is the plan. You never know, this is a bit of a country car, dirt road all the time. So that's why you might notice it's a bit dirtier and sometimes the heat or the dirt, the dust, this sort of conditions can make things a little bit more complicated, but hopefully everything goes okay. We're gonna uh, continue through the steps. We'll let you know what's all happening. Right, let's see if these come out. Oh, nice and tight, that's a big bar you've got there. A bit of leverage, all right. So remove these two bolts, because we've got to remove the Catalytic converter here is going to need to be cleaned out as well because this turbo was throwing some oil out as well. It was a bit smoky. Beautiful. All stuff up to the dump pipe. So that's good news. But there's three to go on the back of the turbo. So we've got the top one so far. No, bottom one so far. Well, good work. Um, fairly difficult access to get to those. So you've got the three bolts there. Give them a good soak and take your time. Quality tools, make sure you've got all your angle right. You don't want to muck this up. All right, so beware if you do go to change your own turbo. If the car's really clean and doesn't go off-road and doesn't live at the beach and doesn't do all these sorts of things, it might go pretty straightforward. We've uh, changed plenty of turbos and the workshop partners. Sometimes you have a few issues. Uh, sometimes it goes pretty smooth. And in this case, pretty much every nut and bolt this one at the bottom here, it's rusted away. There's like hardly anything there. Anyway, we've got some things to do, but we've tried some other ones and we're finding that kind of a lot of them are gonna be uh, very difficult for whatever reason. Might have been X near the beach or something, I don't know. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to plan B and we're gonna pull the whole top out, inlet manifold, uh, exhaust manifold, studs, and try and lift the whole thing out from the top and work on it on the bench because we're gonna be able to access all these bolts a lot easier, so. Let's see what happens with right, that. Right, so up the top end of things, everything's gone to plan one, plan B anyway, right? So disconnect the battery, of course, get the compressor out of the way, pull the dipstick out. We've got the three bolts out joining the exhaust manifold to the turbo, no problem. Um, we've got to get the studs out. The other problem we've got, we've got the 17 mil, the oil um, to the turbo down there, we've got to get to. But what we need to do is get the manifold out of the way to be able to get to what it's down. It's that one uh, where down there, hard to see it. Though. There is down there. It's down there somewhere. You know the one. That's 17 mil, isn't it? Hip. Yep. 17 mil. Yeah, it's down there somewhere. Anyway, you'll see it. Oh, it's coolant, not oil. What I was saying, coolant. Yeah. But um, to get to that, we need the manifold out of the way to get to it from the top because of the access problem. So this is certainly a different way of doing things. Could be a highly valuable video if you end up having problems changing your turbo. So let's see what else we got for you. And yeah, we'll remember to get that socket down there. And that socket there, we'll get him later. Right, so <laughs> everything's going to plan so far. All the bolts come out of the head, no problem. I've never had any issues with those. If you're still around, please let us know in the comments. If you work on 1KDs and you've ever had problems getting these studs out of the uh, exhaust manifold there. Sorry if I called it an inlet, whatever. I always do that wrong. But anyway, you know what I mean. Um, even the three at the manifold to the turbo, they went well. Now we've got access to get to that 17 mil down there, that coolant. So that one in the middle of the picture. The double-sided washer, single-use only. Once we get that out of the way, we can support this turbo, get someone underneath to take the last two bolts out of the supporting bracket, and hopefully, 
for our plan and it might not work out. So drum roll, who's got a drum roll? Not me, anyway, we're gonna hopefully lift it out. Worst case scenario, we're gonna be pulling more stuff off this turbo somehow to try and get it out. But you know, at the moment, this is the best, what seems like the best solution. Oh, look, so. There it's gone, beautiful. Now, bit of fun and games. Once we got the turbo loose, to get it out, the uh, coolant feed and return lines that connect where those yellow caps are that were still the two 10 mils and the little 10 mil for the bracket of those lines. So you kind of need a helper. This is the most work I've done in months, isn't it? In years. In years, yeah, probably. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was there holding the turbo. That was five minutes holding the turbo, waiting for you to do that. Mate, anyway, yeah, a bit of complication, but it's out now. So this is all good. Let's have a look at the bench. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. These, this is actually a good nut. We didn't even try that one. This one, there was nothing left of it. Wait till you see the one underneath that turbo. See the rust on it, right? Anyway, fun and games, and you get that. That's why turbo installation is um, starting from price starting. Some places are 450. That's the cheapest I've ever heard. At the Prada Hospital, it's 600. But rarely does it happen, and uh, yeah, that's around about what you're looking at. Some of our workshop partners a little bit cheaper, and of course, if there's complications, it's going to take a bit more. This is what I was talking about at the back here. There's a bracket of the lines that go on here, and these lines here. So we needed to remove that so they weren't sticking out to get around the other coolant pipe. Basically to get around this pipe here, because this pipe, this one was the one that was in the way of those pipes. Might have been able to manoeuvre around, but it was like, you know what, three more 10 mils. We've pulled that much stuff off now, it's not funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much left of that to start off with. The socket wouldn't go on. It's very pitted, right? So that was the start of the problems. And then there was these ones, as you can see. Someone's had a go at those before, and as soon as we went on it, nothing happened. But once we get these four bolts undone, we're laughing. Okay, so we're in luck. I just want to say, these come in handy. Hey, how much are these? Hip, but from Bunnings? $37. 37 bucks with a special gas can, but what I do, you know those butane cans that, you know, you never quite empty out on the butane burner, and I know some people aren't going to use them, but that's fine. Each to their own, if you're careful how you use it. It, it's really good for finishing off the gas can, but so a bit of heat, like always, everybody knows that, right? Um, but very difficult to do in the vehicle. So if you have trouble, if you see these are really badly rusted and the one for the bracket, my advice is at that point before you damage them, because once you get it, just do the exhaust, get the exhaust off the way we've just done it, because then you've got a lot more access at the bench. And if you haven't already previously rounded so even though they were, they were rounded quality tools you know we've got the quality tech, uh, 12 mil impact for the one that was really bad um i think that was the one on the bracket to be quite honest um we hammered on an 11 and that got the job done so with a gun powerful impact gun quality socket heat and uh access of course so now we're back to where we were before the new turbo one of the studs came out that's all right we need the nuts so we will reuse the nuts what we might do is put some new nuts even though they're not the right ones you know i like genuine i don't keep these nuts so it might be something that i buy and start keeping in stock um because it's probably a good idea to have new nuts for these isn't it so from now on i think i'm gonna um order when i order turbos is four nuts these three plus that one so that we can just replace them because these are the trouble i mean you can see so anyway Whatever, we'll get it all back together. We'll get these bits cleaned up onto the new turbo and get it going back in. Oh, and you wanted to have a look at the turbo. Huh. That's not turning very well. Oh, look, what's that missing there? Uh. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it, mate. Put it back together. Mm. What did you pull the turbo off for? Have a look at the outer of the turbo and just rubbing on the housing there, out of control. That's a pretty bad one, yeah. Bits and pieces gone everywhere. That's what we call catastrophic failure. We thought we'd do it a bit different again, and a uh, new turbo's in position down there, but uh, a bit different to what's been happening lately because you don't normally have the manifold. We could have put the manifold on. Could have done it the usual way, but uh, anyway. Give you a bit of a look around so you can see what's done, what's not done, what's got to go where. But, uh, one to the oil supply down there is done. Okay, so the new turbo's on. We've got the exhaust right. gas. What, what's all the check things? You that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. 
Houses are plugged in. Clamps are on. In. That's all plugged in. All talked up. All right. Bracket next. Bracket up there. Happy days. Yeah, we better put that back. Okay. Am I allowed to plug? Can I plug this in? Am I allowed to plug that in? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Oh, what's that pipe? What does that do? Do you need that? Maybe we could just put a catch can on there instead. My bit of catch can. Now that's the uh, oil return back to the sump. All right, so we've got a bit of a dodgy bolt what we had available for the bracket at this stage. We're going to order some genuine ones and swap them out once we get those in stock because I'm just a genuine kind of guy. You know how it works, right? Nice new turbo there. Obviously, the dump pipe's got to go in the back here. We've got the uh, copper ease on some of the bolts. And, uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to order some genuine nuts for those as well. We've got one we're going to use, but the other two. So, yeah, look, you know, probably just change them all anyway, maybe. I'll keep one for a spare, whatever. The turbo looks better than the old one, isn't it? Anyway. Get this dirty old turbo out of here. Just wanted to say, uh, this is one of our local VIPs and in the interest of R&D and R&TU, what we've done on this one, the exhaust manifold, we have reused the exhaust manifold gasket because they're about 60 bucks worth or something like that. So not just about the money, it's just we think it'll be fine we're quite confident and we just want to know because if you get in that situation because you're not normally going to need it and you don't want to waste 50, 60 bucks if you don't need it and it could get damaged in shipping and all that sort of thing so it's not something that we would send but you're not going to need it but if you get in the situation like what we have here we want to be able to say look we've reused the exhaust manifold gasket and it was a non-issue well, this is cool um you know no air filter needed, mate. We've got the top of the air box and uh, nothing at the bottom. Beautiful. Oh, what's going on there? Where's the rest of the air box? Would it make sense to put the bottom in first? No, I'll put this in so I can get access to this. That's a good idea, yeah. Just uh, sit the top sitting in place so you can get to the clamp at the bottom of the air duct and then put the base in later. Not a bad idea. Anyway, it's past beer o'clock. It's all back together and it's time to uh, fire it up and... Uh, Happy days. That's not bad. Start and stop. Give it a pump now if you like. Mmm. All part of the fun. That gone hard yet? We did the fuel, two fuel filters, so it's all right. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> all right, more pumping. Let's try it again. <laughs> Had everybody worried, didn't we? Fuel filters every time. Sometimes, isn't that beautiful? All right, it's got plenty of uh, oil in it now. Let's give it a wash up. 